Hello and welcome to the channel, my name is Kai and in today's video we're going to have a look at some side-by-side -side comparisons of the photos and videos that you get out of the Apple iPhone 14 Pro versus the Canon SL3, also referred to as the 250D DSLR camera, so let's jump into it. So the iPhone 14 Pro has three cameras on the back. The main 48 megapixel quad pixel camera has a 24 millimeter and a 48 millimeter focal length. The telephoto camera is 12 megapixels with a 77 millimeter focal length. And the ultra wide camera is 12 megapixels with a 13 millimeter focal length. And you also have your front facing selfie camera, which has a 12 megapixel sensor and which the DxOMark.com has rated as the best selfie camera that you can get on any smartphone today. True at the time of recording this video. The Canon SL3 250D is a DSLR camera with a 24.1 megapixel crop frame sensor and I'll be using a variety of different lenses here the 24 to 105 millimeter lens the 70 to 200 millimeter and the 16 to 35 millimeter to compare it against the focal lengths of the iPhone 14 Pro and also as a disclaimer bear in mind that we do have a crop of 1.6 times on the Canon SL3 so trying to match these focal lengths up on the iPhone 14 Pro with the SL3 is going to be pretty tricky so let's have a look at some photos taken side by side and let's do a little comparison. So here are a selection of photos taken directly out of the Apple iPhone 14 Pro with different lenses and with the vibrant picture settings selected. I've also taken the Canon SL3 RAW files and edited them slightly in Photoshop just to compete with the vibrancy of the Apple iPhone 14 Pro. When it comes to video, the iPhone 14 Pro is bursting with the latest features. It has 4K video up to 60 frames per second. It comes with action video, which is a super smooth stabilization, and it has the awesome cinematic video function. The Canon SL3, being a few years old now, doesn't really compete as well in the video arena. It does have 1080 video up to 60 frames per second and a 4K video mode, but it's heavily cropped and it uses a slower focusing system than when you're shooting in 1080. It does feature movie digital image stabilization that helps capture stable and smooth movies, correcting not only the subject's emotion, but also camera shake. And here's a video side-by-side -side comparison walking with the Canon SL3 with the digital IS on versus the video action mode of the iPhone 14 Pro. So this is not the action video mode of the Apple iPhone 14 Pro. It is in fact the cinematic mode is what you're watching now, but it still does a fantastic job of stabilizing the handheld footage. The SL3 has the digital image stabilization turned on as well as an image stabilized lens, but it's still quite jittery and you can see the movement, particularly the handheld movement as well as walking in the footage itself. I think the iPhone stabilization is perfect for people who want to do talking videos while walking out and about those type of vlogs or travel videos. It's really perfect for that. The Apple iPhone 14 Pro also has the Pro Raw and Pro Res modes that you can turn on, which allow you to retain more information and dynamic range in your photos and videos, but it comes at the cost of more storage. One minute of 10-bit HDR Pro Res 4K video requires approximately six gigabytes of storage, meaning that you get around 20 minutes of video if you're shooting on the 128 gigabyte version of the iPhone 14 Pro, whereas the Canon SL3 uses SD cards, which you can swap out and use when you need them. So at this junction, let's quickly show the Pro Res quality of the iPhone 14 Pro against the Canon SL3 250D in 1080. Hey, there we go. Okay, so what I'm doing now is a side-by-side -side comparison of the iPhone 14 Pro over here, along with the Canon SL3 250D over here. I'm shooting in HD, 30 frames per second. So this is the selfie mode of the iPhone 14 Pro alongside the SL3, I've just turned the screen around. When it comes to vlogging, I think the iPhone is gonna be a lot easier and less hassle to carry. I'm holding the whole setup full arm's length away. And also I'm using the Joby into the SL3 to capture sound via my Joby Wavo Air. So it's quite a mad setup, but 
you judge for yourselves what you think of the quality. So I'll put these side by side. And also, if you want to hear the sound on the iPhone 14 Pro, let's swap over to it now. And this is the sound coming out of the iPhone 14 directly. Of course, you can get an audio setup for your iPhone 14. You be the judge. What do you think of these, the selfie camera versus the SL3 in vertical mode? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, when it comes to ease of use and convenience, the Canon SL3 250D is actually rated as one of the smallest and lightest DSLR cameras in the world. But with the lenses that we have been using today, it very quickly becomes a hot, heavy mess. And even on its own, when compared to the iPhone 14 Pro, it's very much a bulky piece of kit. The iPhone 14 Pro easily fits into your pocket. It's always with you. Granted, you don't always have the same quality on the telephoto and ultra wide lenses that you get with the main cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro, but compare what you have to carry around with the Canon SL3 to get those similar focal lengths. This is a bag full of kit versus an in your pocket mobile device. And this brings us nicely onto another factor to consider, and that is the cost. The 128 gigabyte version of the iPhone 14 Pro is currently £1,099 in the UK. That's $999 in the United States. The Pro Max is £1,199 or $1,099. And this goes up depending on the storage. For the Canon SL3 250D, you can buy it new from the official Canon store for around $649. And in the UK, you can get it with the EFS 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens for £699. If we were to factor in all the lenses that we use today, we'd be looking at an extra £2,000 slash dollars on top of the cost of the body. So which one should you get and why? Having a camera like the SL3 250D is always going to be useful for content creators who want a dedicated piece of hardware for their YouTube channels, their vlogs, long form content, also photographers, hobbyists who again want to have something dedicated to their art. Some of the advantages of the SL3 over something like an iPhone is going to be storage. If you have a camera with SD cards, you won't be struggling to balance resources with apps and music alongside your phone photos and videos. You have this one tool that is designed for you to do that one thing, which is to create content. You also have the flexibility for better lens options and the control over the settings. And overall, the SL3 is a great hobbyist camera, enabling you to get some fantastic images that you can shoot in RAW, you can edit in post, and these are images that you can take your time creating and crafting. On the other hand, if you're looking to create more content on the go for social, for photos, reels, shorts, TikToks, and you want to up your production game, then something like the iPhone 14 Pro series is excellent for that. It's super convenient, it's always with you. The camera quality is amazing. It takes fantastic photos and videos, particularly that cinematic mode. And also you can edit on the go with things like CapCut. And with the new video action mode, you don't need extra kit like gimbals. It's just easy to use. It cuts out all the extra steps in your content creation game to streamline your creation process. I think a big question here would be, are phones going to replace cameras? I think we're a fair way away from that happening completely, but with the advances in technology over the last few years for mobile technologies, the convenience of having your phone with you, the camera sensors, the lenses, and picture quality all getting better and better, and I've been reading comments from subscribers who are solely using their mobile devices for content creation, I would probably be concerned if I were a company who were purely manufacturing and selling cameras. Now, I personally use my Canon cameras all the time, especially for corporate gigs. Can you imagine turning up to your client gig or wedding or conference with your iPhone? I probably wouldn't turn up to a corporate gig with an Canon SL3 either, to be honest. Of course, you will always have your diehard camera fans and hobbyists, but maybe, just maybe, we're moving into a world where consumers will probably be using their mobile devices more and more and semi-professional cameras less and less for content creation and maybe only the professionals or diehards will be investing in and using camera equipment as we know it today for corporate gigs and sports and weddings. I'm not entirely sure. I guess time will tell. So those are my thoughts on the iPhone 14 Pro versus the Canon SL3 250D crop frame DSLR camera. What are your thoughts on using mobile devices for content creation, photography, and video versus using traditional cameras like the Canon SL3 250D? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And now that you've watched this video, also make sure that you check out my step-by-step -step video on how to shoot in manual mode on the Canon SL3 250D camera, which will also teach you the basics of photography. Don't forget to like the video if you like it. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell for notifications. So that's it for me today, guys. All that I've got left to say is stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement, and inspire. And I'll catch you next time on Kai Creative.